Hello, hello, is anyone there? I've taken a lot of time and trouble to be here. I think it's very rude of you not to show your faces and not be on time. I think that, that's ridiculous. Don't worry, Miss uh, Miss uh, Royal uh, person. You know, these people they they you know they will be here. This fantastic. Relax, okay? Just relax, all right? Okay. Uh, don't worry, I'll be back. Fantastic. Hello, how are you, gentlemen? We're great. Oh, oh, and, oh, and oh, I, oh. We're, we're late, Stephen. We're late. We're, we're, we are late, like you yes, you are, are, David. Uh, you know, I think I always, it's quite shocking, actually. Yeah. I always, I always, I always thought he was a queen. But anyway, um, our wow, guest, wow. <laughs> Who are you uh, calling yeah. a queen? Come here, come yes. on. What is going <laughs> on, this Stephen? Is, <laughs> this is why it's good that he's fifteen thousand miles away. Our guest today <laughs> is is a, is Roll Woods or AKA Rob Vega, which is the man of yeah. a thousand voices. And we had him mm. on a few weeks ago. Don't hmm, this is like really cool stuff. And you okay, can do, okay, yeah, you can do. I'm yeah. I'm complimenting you. All right, so thank you. Ha- all, right, all right, here the has get, been from get New the York. T-shirt <laughs> there you go. Get the T-shirt ready. for that one. Get the T-shirt this, ready this, for that one. This gentleman can do voices. So today his interview is really just going to be a bunch of voices. We're just going to have a good time with it. Um, we had such a good time the last okay. time. We'll try not to go off on a New York tangent. Um, apparently, um, some people don't like that. So, um, well, I, under, I understand that you're not actually in Austin today, yeah, Steve. Where are you today, Stephen? Can I ask you? That? Oh, I am in. I am in the greatest city in the world. Oh, Amsterdam. New York. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. Yes, I actually am in New Amsterdam, which is what this used to be. So yes, I am in New York. And my yeah. family and I have been taking the subway everywhere. So it's so very exciting. It's the first time I've never so, been mugged. Yes. So, Roald, are, okay. you, are, you, are you already jealous that, uh, that Stephen's actually gone back to, to, to your, to your to Exceptionally. The, holy, the, the holy ground? The, there are only two great cities for me. And the one was where I was born and the other one is New York. So there we go. There you go. And listen, some guy got mugged the other day and he said it wasn't a professional guy, job. The guy who mugged him, he said, because he had a uh, butter on the knife that he used. So, you know, this is a, it's a different city than it used to be. <laughs> and here at the hotel, we asked them how long it is to the subway. They said they don't know. No one's ever made it. So, you know, it's uh, we're, we're doing really good here. So what can Speaking I tell Speaking of not going on a New York tangent. Yes, there okay. you go. Um, yeah. All right. Okay. So, so, um, so let us interview our friend here as his celebrity voices, because he can do Sean Connery. He can do Arnold. He can yes. do... Other, so, do a little Sean Connery, Mr. Connery. Tell us what's what did you think? Of would Daniel you would you Craig like a bit of would you seven? would you like a bit of Sean Connery? Would you? Is that oh what you want? Oh my God, that'd be that'd be awesome. Well, you know one of the best um, Connery bits. Do you, you remember a movie called The Rock? Yes, with Nicolas okay. Cage. Exactly, and I think Connery's character. Well, uh, Nicolas Cage was good speed or something. Right, right, right. And and he was just moaning about everything as they were trying to get to the island to take out. Ed Harris's character. You remember that whole thing? Sure. And Sean Connery was the guy. Yeah, Sean Connery was the guy who was the only chap that managed to escape from San Francisco, or the, excuse me, Alcatraz and so on. Anyway, so they come out of the water, and there's Nicolas Cage's character moaning again. And he says, Come here, son's like, I'm trying to do my best. And Connery turns around to him and he says, I'm going to replace one word because, you know, this could be a family podcast. But he says, He says, Let me just think now. He says, You're best. Only losers whine about their best. Winners go home and shag the prom queen. Why don't you do something of value with your bloody life and stop being such a snowflake? I added the bit at the end. So I like that. I like that. I like that. That's like was a good in the speech. Door. I like that. That is very cool. I would almost because he's always. Like that. You know, he like it's the asses. You see, shoes. Take off your shoes. You know, it's that. That's the that's the key to a a good Connery impression. And and don't hit too many people. You can't you you can't hit your wife so, too often. Yes. Mm, sorry. How, sorry. So how did this all come about? Were you do were you doing this stuff for uh, for your radio shows or or just for fun or for or for shits and giggles? Um, I was an only kid. I was an only child. A lot. That yeah. A lot. Yeah. And and I was at boarding school a lot. And there were books, and we used to read things and create characters, and because we were really bored. This was before, you know, this is before, I'm a BG. This is before Google. Hmm? So you went to a boring school. Is that what you're trying to tell us now? Boarding. Boarding. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Dave. Is this audio quality not up to scratch over there? 
Mm. Yes, I, no, boarding boarding school. Yeah, that's I right. Just, I just and, don't think you articulate well enough. That's the problem. You see. Why are you I, calling inarticulate, you little prat? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, just so no, you know, this, I, is, um, this isn't a kid's show and everything that we have. Right? Kids can listen to most of our shows, but if this one can tell it's a little adult content, we would just tell them at the beginning. So we're good. So okay. feel free. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll feel free. Yeah. There yeah. you go. That's what we did, Dave. We, um, we used to... Um, I just remember reading books and creating characters and I didn't think this is what I would do. And, uh, yeah. And I did theater at school as a hobby. Um, yeah, it's, it's not something you, what is, it's not something you imagine you will do. I mean, no one thinks yeah. that radio and voices and acting is a real job. My well, family, I, I, was, it, read, so, I, I mean, was reading something about it the other day and they said that your, they said your radio shows were like a hobby. So I, I don't. Yes, yes. I consider what I do, the voice thing, the radio thing, a hobby. I'm not interested in working. They always said radio beats working, and that's absolutely true. Um, I, I've never really held a proper job. I'm I'm a I'm a blight on society, and and that's just the way it is. No, I've I just <laughs> I I got I got the degrees for the family. I did the whole family thing. Graduated college, blah blah blah. I got the business degree. And then decided to do what I always wanted to do. And that was what I'm doing now. And the family always said, you know, when are you going to get a real job? And I always said, well, this is what I made last year. Oh, so that is a real job. And that's that's how I shut them up. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, I, I think I it's, good, it's fun. Be good, be good to interject at this point of time for all those people who weren't on the, on, they didn't have an opportunity to see the first time around. Your diploma is actually hanging on the wall. Is that correct? Yes. Oh, there That's you go. Right there, so right there. Yeah. My business, my business degree thingy is right there on the wall. There it is. See, there, there it is, go. right there. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I paid ten dollars for it. No, I'm kidding. I, I... Well, no, is that with or without the frame? <laughs> <laughs> no, it came with the frame, and, wow. and, and, and uh, yeah, yeah, good deal, good deal. No, I did all that. I studied, did all that stuff. But and 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 power to the people. You know, people like Steve and. All the financial people like my family, all of them are financial whiz kids. And that's great. That's fine. That's lovely. You've got to have somebody doing that. But it just wasn't really for me. So. And, and here's the other part I like. We're interviewing him and he gets to drink wine while we're interviewing him. So by the end of the interview, this the voices should be great. Wine. So. I wish this was wine. No, it's actually, okay, okay. it's wine. No, it's not wine, okay. but it, it, is, it, it, it does look like wine. It's in a wine glass, isn't it? It's I know, that's really what I'm like, Nice. I was going to say, well, I is this a, time we, are we, we were doing this. Are we, witnessing an, are we witnessing another miracle now? Is that what, is that what you're trying to tell us? <laughs> miracle? Yeah. What miracle? What miracle are you talking the about? Mir the miracle of, of turning water into wine? Is that, is that, is that uh, what you're trying to tell us? It's 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 Coca Cola, but for the purposes of this interview, yes, it's wine. I'm turning water into wine. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, yes, yeah. for the people on the podcast, it's wine. For everybody yeah. else, it's Coca Cola, yeah. right? There and Coke's not there a sponsor, so screw Coke. No, no, anyway. no, no. Other, so, other, so, exactly. other, other sodas are available. They tell us, but um, that's but, true. That's but, true. But we're not going to mention them because we want lots of money from Coca Cola. So come on, guys. I will. Some money. I will say something about wine. I will yes. say something about wine. So I learned from a chap in, uh, funnily enough, when I was in the, the city that we're not going to go on about, New York. You mean when I New was York? Voicing that. that city? That yes. city? Who that's would want to talk yeah. about New York? <laughs> and there was a guy that said to me, before you do anything, like a, like a present or, or an audiovisual presentation, a lot of speaking, right. take some red wine and you swill it around and you don't drink it, you spit it out. And it dries right. everything and, and you get, it gets rid of what sounds. Yeah. I did girls like that. Yeah, I understand. What anyway, um, <laughs> but I'm bored. Thank you. I'll be on Tuesday. Ship your weights down. Right. Um, try the veal. Nothing to do with me. There you go. Innocent. So, yeah. Innocent. So you do your voices. So yeah. if we were going to interview Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yes. Right. And we were going to yeah. ask Arnold. So, so we know, you, you know, Maria, not exactly the hottest chick in the world, but you're made seriously. What's that all about? Well, you know, you know, it's not about the body, you know, it, it is about the biceps, you know, she's got the big biceps <laughs> and, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, the people say to me that my body disgusts them, you know, and this is crazy because, uh, you know, you, you can't just look at the body. It's what in the mind, you know, what comes out of the, the, the voice, you know, the, the, the package, it's, it's the whole package, you see. You can't be Stephen. You can't you can't just look at somebody and, and do the judging thing. You know, you can't do that. 
This is what the girly man does. You know, you've yeah. got to, you, you've got, you've got to explore, Stephen. You know, come on. <laughs> I love it. That's great. <laughs> And then he went She wasn't much to look at, you know, that's true. She was a little... Yeah. Mm, a little crazy. softic. <laughs> yeah, but then I got the glasses, you know, now I can see what I'm looking at, you know, it's fantastic. There you, there, there you go. <laughs> I love it. Have you ever yeah. done your impression in front of like a like your whether it's Schwarzenegger or, or Sean Connery and Kermit the Frog, of course, you can't actually do him in front of Kermit because the guy who really was Kermit is dead. Um, but have you ever done well, your you know, I think, sure, I think Sean Connery would give him a run for his money as well, Steve, because uh, yeah, he's pushing. So, you're asking me if I ever done it as a like a stand up thing? Well, not a stand up thing, maybe a stand up, but if you I have done it as a stand up thing, mm -hmm. okay, but, but have you also done it in front of one of the celebrities that you do? Madiba Mandela. I did it in oh, front really? of Mandela. Yes. Um, way back in the day when I was just getting into radio in Cape Town, um, he used to, and this is now 94, 95, when, you know. That's 1994, 95 for the audience. 19, have 20th century. Yeah. Sorry, yes. 19, yeah. 1994, 1995, um, when we had the, um, well, the first democratic elections here. Right. And we got rid of all that nonsense that we used to have before, which was great. And yeah, I was on. A, I was doing a, a, an afternoon drive show, uh, so I had a bit of the celebrity thing going on, and I would MC things. And and of course, he was the president. He was the first president of the country, right. so it all kind of uh, dovetailed very nicely. And he used to do clearly a lot of uh, public speaking engagements. And one of them uh, was at Mitchell's Plain in Cape Town, yeah. and I was on the big radio station there, so I would introduce him. And I and I thought, oh, let's try this out. And I, I, I mean, I took it, it, it. I was quite nervous about it. I actually did a I did a little impression of him, and he came up and he said, "That was very very good. Thank you very much, Mister Vega. Oh, you are you are so clever." And um, and <laughs> and then he booted me off the stage and and, and spoke to the people. Yeah, now he he was very he was a very um, um, well. Obviously, I saw him towards the end. But he was a very, he had such a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Reverence about him. He was so, he moved slowly and so deliberately. He was quite a, he was probably one of the most special people I've ever met. So, yes. And I did my impression of him in front of him. And he thought it was great. So, there you go. That, that is fun. awesome. So, he's the yeah, only one was, then that you've done it in front of, like the uh, other Well, I, I did an Arnie thing years ago for right. some greeting card company you know it was a you know it was this you know the common you know i don't know it was a birthday thing or whatever yeah. and my agent as far as i know she never never showed me the letter or the email but she got a a, a, a notification from them and they were just right. concerned because this could be seen as some sort of an endorsement he's very protective of his brand I'm his sure. Arnie. very protective and the better you are and the more possible complaints you get that means you're doing a good job. All right. Yeah. So for the podcast, we have Arnold yeah. Schwarzenegger on. For the YouTube people that can see our guest, <laughs> not Arnold Schwarzenegger. But if you can't, you're listening that in is your correct, car, yes. right? Yes. Arnold is actually with us. I'm so, going to charge you a lot, Stephen, you know, because I'm, yes. you know, I'm very, very expensive. Come on, you know. I know. Yeah. You drive a yeah. Hummer, sure. Yeah. So. <laughs> and, and this how, is how, this how, is how you how become the big man. Hmm? How is life in California then, Arnie? Can you tell us a little bit about in California? Life in California, you know, you know, Dave, it has been it was terrible, you know, because I was the governor there, you know, and the things they were working, you know, the people they were they were getting stronger, you know, and that was all about the fitness. It was fantastic, you know. And then I, you know, then I had to go, you know, the whole, you know, the, the Maria thing and all the scandals. And now look at it, it's just yo. Oh. He's not working at all, you know, all these snowflakes and these people and these actors, you know, with a with the plastic on, you know, it's terrible, you know. Anyway. <laughs> How many facelifts have you had, Arnie? No, never mind. So wait, and you do one of my favorite ones, which is Kermit the Frog. And so we'll we can oh, have a Kermit the Frog me. off. We can have a Kermit the Frog off because I like to do Kermit uh, the Frog. Okay. I gotta do something. You might have heard of this. Um okay. one, of, one of the cool things about doing voices is you get you plug the voice. Right. into a completely different character Correct. saying the totally different things. So I know this has been done before, but it, it's something that I thought was really funny and I, and I want to do for you now. Okay. And that was, um, uh, it, it's Kermit okay. doing Taken. Have you seen that? Have you been no, seen that? No, I have that? not. I have okay. Not. So you know the movie, you know the movie with I'm Liam Neeson, you know, right? right? You know that movie. 
You know, he says, I don't have any money, but I right. do have some special skills. Okay, so that's Liam Neeson. And then what you do is you take Kermit and you plug him into that. And then right. you get this. He goes, <laughs> I, don't, I don't have any money, but what I do have is a special set of skills. I will find you. I will hunt you down and I will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. That's cute. I always yeah, told him. It's quite the... a leap, you know, being a fraud is quite a leap. <laughs> yes, from pad to pad. So, but, no, I like that. I usually do my Kermit the Frog with a joke that I heard. So okay. let me see now if I can do my Kermit. And if I can't, okay. then we'll just stop. Or I'll All tell right. a joke okay. and you can do it as Kermit. So Kermit the okay. Frog is getting a little, you know, something from Miss Piggy and the phone rings and Kermit goes, yes. And Miss and the guy says, may I speak to Miss Piggy? And Kermit says, Miss Piggy can't come to the phone right now. She's getting a frog on her throat. <laughs> 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 that's that's my oh, no. there you go. That's my I would frog. never do that. That is really <laughs> awful. Thank Can't you. Believe you said that. Yes. And, uh, and now, I love and now this piggy. Be, yes, sure you do. So, <laughs> now, and I, now, so now we're gonna be sued by everybody, it would seem. But uh, I'm hope I'm hoping publicity is good. So listen, you know, we gotta get the two old farts making noises, uh, you know. But remember, yeah. expectations are really low. So yeah. Well, I used to have a thing for my radio show, and it went, and again, I probably copied this from someone. I think I heard it years ago, and it went, Rob Vega, the man who promises you nothing and delivers. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. He should, so, do, he should do all our intros, because that's literally yeah, what should, we yeah. promise. Yeah. We promise yeah. you nothing and deliver nothing, so it works out well. Yeah. So you've got that whole... Mm -hmm. Can you Go do ahead. that for us, then, Roald? Uh, can, you, can you do the two old farts? Uh, the thing that's behind, that's now behind uh, Stephen. Okay, uh, two old farts making noises. Okay, okay. This is two old farts making noises. Expectations are real low. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like that. Mm. I think I'm, I'm actually. That's going to be my phone ringer now. I can't wait for my phone to ring. So, so, so you radio. So, do you still do stand up, or did you do stand up for a little bit and then you just? Stopped I did it there? for a bit. No, it's not. It, I'll tell you what the weird thing about doing uh, stand-up is. I don't do the the comedy ha 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 stuff. That, I mean, right. I can, but it's a strange world. It really is a tough world. Right. And and power to the people that do it, but it's it's really hard stuff. And no yeah. comedians are funny in their own lives. They're actually quite miserable people, which makes them strangely enough good comedians. I know that sounds uh, counterintuitive, but all the comedians I've ever met are really strange, sad people. Hmm. I don't know. And they use, they use their, their material. They've often, a lot of guys have said to me, they use it almost as a form of therapy. If you look at guys like uh, Bill Burr and whatever, and they just, right. I mean, Bill's just up there just spewing his mind. And I always think it's either this for him or a psychologist, one of the two, and this one pays better. So right. you know, that's what he does. But the problem with being an impressionist, if you're any good, you, 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 you never do it on your own. You come between, I always used to go between other comedians. Right. Now, if you're doing it properly, the audience goes quiet, which is really odd. So yeah. you will begin speaking and they go, ah, and they'll look at you. It's it's really quite strange. And and I don't know. And and I was told that was that was good. That was good. Because if you, you know, yes, you know, you start with your Connery thing, you know, and they go, Oh my goodness, that sounds like Sean Connery. That's fantastic. <laughs> but that's as good as it, you know, it, it's a weird, I don't know. I didn't feel comfortable doing it. I I mean. Right. And it and it didn't pay well, so that's probably why I stopped doing it. So yeah, and so now you've got the you've got this gig, you've got the voice, and you got the radio. So are you still doing a lot of voiceovers, or just mostly radio? I do, South I Africa? do, I do. I um, I was doing some Jaguar North America stuff in, in a very very austere voice. It was a couple of years ago. I haven't done anything right. there for a while. Uh, I did I did something for. Oh, was it NBC? It, uh, it was the Kentucky thing, the Derby. Oh, the Kentucky, the Kentucky Derby, sure. Yeah, I did something for uh, uh, the Breeders' Cup. I did okay. that. That so in the states, you probably would have seen that. I did. It, it was. It was this. It had to be this very international sound. They come from all over the world. Right, right. The Breeders' Cup on NBC. So I did. Did I occasionally pop in and do stuff over there? You know, virtually, because right. uh, you know we can't fly. Uh, but here I do, you know, what's weird is I spent three years in the States. And when I got back here, uh, obviously I was, I could do a fairly decent uh, American accent. And suddenly everybody wanted me to be that. And it was really quite bizarre. And I was doing stuff to the States 
as a quasi sort of English fella it was really strange. So the people in America wanted, they didn't want American. And we got 300 million of those who don't want more. Don't, that's it. We're good. Yeah, and yeah. over here, that's all they wanted. It's really, it's been, it's, it's quite strange. They, there's a fascination with uh, with the American accent. Yeah. And of course, when I, when I go and they say, they say to me, can you do an American accent? And I go, which one? Right. <laughs> this, can you be more specific? Don't get clever now. I go, well, no, really. Seriously. There's, there, I mean, in the greater New York area, there must be like 10 of them. And that's just in Manhattan. I mean, it's ridiculous. So pick one. Anyway, yep. so I, I do a lot of that, strangely enough. I do a lot of, yeah. So American promos will come here and I will okay. revoice it and put the station's, uh, you know, stuff on it. So wow. we've got a we've got a channel here called DSTV and I will just replace only on DSTV, you know, stuff like that. So I do a lot gotcha, of that. Gotcha, gotcha. Very um, cool. Re- a lot of retail stuff as well, which is... Um, it's not something you put on your 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 demo because it's all that shouty stuff, but it pays the bills. It's where the money is made. Retail, you know, for only five ninety nine, you know, that sort of thing. Right. That. Yes. What about what about the movie stuff? Do you like the blockbuster movie now? Now in the cinemas, are you doing that stuff? Or I used to because I was like the the you know. Um, what was it? To destroy a creature that lives to kill. You mean that sort of, those movie things. But yeah. they don't really, the movie trailer voice is not really being used much anymore. I, I don't know if you've noticed that. They, they've they they've dispensed basically with a voice in most of the trailers. I mean, when was the last time you saw, um, you know, what was it? Well, um, the path the last... to revenge leads to John McClane. They don't, they don't do yeah. much of that anymore. Well, yeah. the last time I went to the cinema, they uh, yeah. they ran they out had, of candles. They didn't have they, talk, they didn't have talkies back. They, then. Well, they, they ran the out of candles, so we couldn't <laughs> see too much. You know, <laughs> yeah. there was a guy. Was it in color? Piano. I'm kidding. Yeah, was... yeah I, I was in color, but everybody else was in color. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh, yeah. So yes. No, it, so, yeah. it becomes it's it's a bit of a party favor now. So companies will have their end of year breaks, and they'll they'll say to me, "Can I do a movie trailer voice?" And you go, "Why?" It's just it it it's always this strange. Right. Can, you know when people say you know, like some guys can push a straw through their nose and bring it out through their mouth or whatever it is, or is it a balloon or is it something else? You know that right. that thing yeah. um, that you do at a pub. Well, that's kind of like with the movie trailer voices. Hey, you can do the movie trailer voice, and I go, yeah, okay, well, say my name, you know, and and yeah, that's it. That's but, about but all. Like, I use but it like you say, it pays the bills, and so you know, it does, it does, it does. <laughs> Impressions don't really pay bills. I mean, I can do all these voices, but they characters are a very small part of uh, of the voice world. Most of the voice stuff is really boring. It's all the company presentations and welcome to this and award ceremonies. It, yeah. Did you do that as a slot in, on your radio show then? Was it, uh, What's that? The uh, the impressions. I still I mean, do. I, I, I use. You still do. Yeah. If I what what I do is I run a thing on my on my radio show, which is. It's a parody news thing because obviously my stage name, Roald Woods is my real name and, and Rob Vega is a stage name. Um, although funny enough in the States, I'm still Roald Woods. I know it's confusing, but <laughs> everywhere else I'm Rob Vega. And what I do is I take the Vega and I make it, the, I do a thing called Vaguely News, which is a skit. Uh, it, it's, I guess like the, not the nine o'clock news, it's, it's, um, it, it's absolute BS news, uh, things that right. couldn't possibly happen. So I'll twist the facts. I'll change things. I mean, for example, I don't know if you remember a guy called Ernie Else. He was the big golfer, South African golfer. Mm-hmm. Um, but he was always very slow and very sleepy. And I ran a story the one time which said, you know, they had rushed him off to hospital. They, they thought he had a heart attack. And he was basically just sitting watching the doves because he was so <laughs> sleepy. You know, and 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 I'll, I'll, I'll ham that up. Um, yeah, I'll just I'll twist things. And of course, there's uh, there's a whole ANC thing going on here, some symposium. So I'll just uh, take some speeches they make and kind of edit them around so they sing rather bizarre things. And then I will be the um, stoic reporter in the studio, reporting in all these crazy things going on. So, is, and, but is, if is I'm it, short of a character, then I will step in and I will do it. Yeah. I've got this. I've got this crackhead called Jonathan Peacemaker, who's hey, Bobby boy, you know, oh, I'm here at the top of K2 and it just found the Guptas. Oh, it's amazing. You know, he'll just, he'll just, uh, he's a bit of a stoner and he, and he, and he shows up wherever. So, yeah. I don't, I, he uh, sounds more a little, a little more flamboyant than a stoner. 
So yeah, he's he's, 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 he's flamboyant. He's very he's flamboyant. flamboyant. Like, hi, yes, my name is, is Bruce. Would you like to sit over here? Or sit over there. Mm. So you know, well, one of those things. Yeah. I leave it. He hasn't, um, you know, mentioned that at all. But Jonathan, you know, it, you you might think that, but you know, yeah. he's a he creative fellow. He sits on a bar stool. You just say, oh, listen, Jonathan, goodness. when you sit on a bar stool, do you get four guys on it or one? And I think that'll answer your question right there. So, you know, Stephen, I just think you're making all kinds of assumptions here. I don't think, you know, it's got anything to do with you. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want this because it's very I, sensitive. Yeah, yeah I see uh, that. And your radio show, just FM only, or can, can we pick it up on the internet? Oh, no, it's uh, online. Yeah. It's I'm. Online. Let's oh yeah, have a, we, let's have a serious plug for the for your radio. Oh show yeah, we'll now. promote that. Okay, well it's it's obviously uh, in, in the, a promotional voice. In a promotional voice, that's part of the deal. Remember. Yeah. Oh, all right. Um, what sort of voice going to do? Um, oh, Wait, crikey, putting have, me on the spot. Fif- yep. You have fifteen thousand voices that you can pick one. Pick one that you want. It's like that's and you know to promote, yeah, promote the radio the show. show. Promote the radio show. Uh, all right. So plug the radio show. It's all right. It's. Uh, Okay, I, I don't want to. I don't want to do the stylistically American thing, so I'm just going to be myself. Yeah. So it's um, it's uh, it's Rob Vega Saturday six to nine a.m. on Hod one hundred two seven. There you go. That's it. It's it's Saturday six to nine a.m. That's that's when that's, it is. Obviously, that's the time. South African six to nine a.m. Yes, I just wanted to clarify. Better. That's GMT <laughs> plus two. It's GMT plus go. two, which right and now is UK plus that. one. Mm-hmm. Right. And here's the best part about that. Any American listening has no idea what number one GMT is. And plus two is throwing them off totally. So it's good to like, Martha, All right. it's GMT. Let me help what you. Do you know what that means? Let me help you. So <laughs> 6, 6 a.m. 6 a.m. We'll forget Greenwich. Screw. Hey, what the hell is Greenwich? Screw yeah. Greenwich. They think it's in so, Connecticut, by the way. So. Uh, yeah, I'll do <laughs> Connecticut time. Brilliant. So yeah. 6 a.m. Yeah. would be midnight. There you right. go. Midnight. Friday into Saturday, midnight, in case, you know, some people are not quite sure when midnight is. You but if go. you get to Friday, it's midnight. That really is Saturday morning. That's when I start. There you go. And there now, you go. will you... Oh, you wait a minute. What is the... We'll it's six it. hours. Yes, it is. Hmm? The we'll link is... All right. Well, the link is hot1027.co.za. That's our radio station link. And you can listen live there. Um that's it. Yeah, that's where you find it. You'll find it there. Mm. We, we we'll have send a, we... to us because and, most of these people aren't going to have a clue. No. So okay. Okay. And, uh, okay. Okay. and with our tens of listeners, you know, we want to make sure you get ten. to ten now. Sure yeah. Yeah. Nope. yeah, yeah, fourteen. 14. At least no, fifteen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, double Steve, digits. <laughs> double digits, guys. Brilliant. Up. I'm well done. Trying to get to yeah. get to get to a hundred. We're having a party. We may stop because we don't want to outdo ourselves. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I mean, well, I mean, Steve is already having the double digit T shirts made. You know, I mean, yeah, that's uh, right. Yeah, it's, it's a little presumptuous, funny. isn't it, Steve? I think that you don't know well, that. You know, we well, ten. We, we, how are you going to prove ten, that? So, yeah. Oh, because the counter shows me. So, like, do paid you know, listeners yep. count? Do paid listen. listeners count? Yes, hey, listen. Anybody <laughs> counts. Let me tell you, if I can get a dead guy in a cemetery to listen, he counts. I'm glad he's counting. Oh, they, they, so well, they, they're, listening yeah. to me. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're probably listening to some South African show, anyway, Steve. So don't absolutely, they are, Dave. Where do you think right. I get my base, my listener base from? Come on, yeah. exactly. Yeah, I mean, call the graveyard shift for nothing. Yeah, yeah. People, yeah. And, <laughs> and people are just dying to listen to it, are they? Yeah, they're yeah, they're yeah. dying. But That's bummed. it. Oh my goodness, man. I'm featuring Wait. in New York next week. Did I tell you that? There's some comedy store. Steve's arranging it for me. Yeah. Yes. It's called the Tell Stone. me. No, <laughs> okay. Dave's going to sit there and just talk about when things were dinosaurs in black and white. No, but what's, um, what's funny is, is that this interview, your, your first interview, and it doesn't matter when we're doing this, actually comes out um, this Thursday, which today's August 2nd. It'll be out on August 4th. And this interview... Right. It's going to be like the week after the week after. So you'll be like, you're, you're, you've come again. So hopefully your fans will like get a kick out of it because they'll get to hear the story and your voices. So, but we had such a good time the last time that you, we were all, all three of us were like, no, we got to do, we just have to do another interview. That was all there is to it. it was so just what like you've done. Yeah. Well, what it wasn't you've effectively so much done is if you've renewed before the figures have come out. What's that, Dave? No, it wasn't so much as, it wasn't so much as an interview. It was, it was more of a sort of, you know, you know, a, Trip advisor, uh, on <laughs> New, New York, York City. City. Oh, New York City. So I thought, well, Nothing wrong with that. That's no, right, Al. No, Nothing wrong no, with that. Yeah. Like I said, we're well, here right Stephen, now. Stephen, yeah. where are you now? Can you just tell us? Because I've forgotten. Where are you now? 
I, I, I'm in the city you've never heard of. It's called New York. And so, yeah. yes, we're in Midtown. A little known, a little known island off the East Coast yeah. of the United States. There we go. Because that's what the, that's what the guys used to tell me. They said, no, you know, this is not the United States. And it's an island off the East Coast of the United States. Got to get that right. Okay, I'm so sorry. Ooh. And, and like we talked about. The, yeah. Yep, in 1972, the New Yorker did that picture, the, the, the New Yorker view of the world. And there's New York, a little bit of America, and then the rest of the world. And it was sort of like, but New York takes up 90% of this picture. So that's, that's definitely the mentality. And the mentality hasn't changed. I will say the subways have gotten better. They're Looks cleaner, like we're nicer. Getting, <laughs> we, we, we're doing that TripAdvisor thing, Dave. There you go. <laughs> yeah, okay. sorry about that. We'll move, so move easy more. to do. Yeah. yeah I know. Right. Well, you know, it's you're talking about a seat. All right. So tell us, give us some more voices. This is all you, man. I want to um, like- all right. Well, um, since we in desperate need of therapy, clearly. Yes. Uh, yes. Dr. Ring. Um, oh, Dr. Uh, Phil. Dr. <laughs> Dr. Phil. The funny thing is, the first time I did Dr. Phil here, uh, that was actually in a stand up and nobody knew who he was. Oh. And I, I well, just well, assumed well, people. Well, who is, Dr. Dr. Who is Dr. Phil? Because he's, that's not, is that the name of my Dr. Stephen? To die that's, if a, that's, your, that's your proctologist. That's a job where you start at the bottom and stay there. But anyway. Okay. So. Uh, okay. So, and he's called Dr. <laughs> Phil. And, and he, come, he comes with a nurse, I take it. No, he's a psychologist, uh, right? Yes. Yes. In a oh, matter of speaking. He, he, so he's not a doctor then? Well, he is. Well, he's um, a make believe doctor. Oh, okay. Right. Yes. I mean, he's, I uh, he's, he's, I'm he's, sorry. Um, it's all confusing. He's, he was put on the map by Oprah. That's 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 basically how it happened. Yeah. Was, he on the, was he on the same map as New York City then? Did they put him on that as well? Actually, he's from Dallas, Texas. That's right. That's oh. right. That's right. Mm-hmm. So, um, I understand. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> How it makes you feel, Stephen. Um, you, <laughs> you need <laughs> you need to find your inner child and and hold on to that, right? And and, and unless <laughs> unless you're holding on to something other than what is appropriate for you, uh, <laughs> I, I don't want to go anywhere. Did, did I mention I love Oprah? <laughs> <laughs> that Doctor Phil. That is Dr. Phil. You got, he's like, he's got all these sayings. He's up here. His voice is here. He's like this. Dave. I mean, that, that that's the key. Actually, that is the key to an impression. There's a guy called Frank Caliendo, who I think is one of the best impressionists on the planet. Yep. And and if, you, if you're wise in whatever career you are in, you learn from people that are good at it. And they can, they, you, you do. And, and sometimes when you watch a decent impressionist doing a voice, you can it it helps you to to do it because you can see what he's doing you can see what he's highlighting and he, and frank always always used to say oh it sounds like i know him but yes you know online um he always used to say it's it's a note it's it's the tone once you've got the tone right like mandela for instance people would battle they would battle with his voice i've i've heard the craziest impressions but all you had to do with nelson mandela for instance was master there's one sound there's a sound you have to master and that sound is this uh, me, it's that it's that it's that little it's that little block wait and a once you got year old jewish guy that's what you have to master i could do that yes <laughs> that is correct Stephen. yeah Thank you. yes and, and that's it and and i remember look i'm not going to do george bush because i can't do george bush but frank kelly and it is one of the best george bush impressions i've ever seen right. he also does the best morgan freeman impression why am i promoting frank kelly Ender? but he uh, he is really he, but he, that's what it is. It's about a note. It's not so much, yes, uh, if you're trying to uh, copy the entire voice, that's that's not what you do. Like with, with Schwarzenegger, for instance, it's, you know, it's here. You know, it's, it's the, the staccato way of talking. You know, it's that, you know. it it That's the way he speaks. And and it's, it's like doing a cartoon. You know, when they do a cartoon, if the guy's got big eyes, they'll make his eyes super big or his ears flappy and they'll, they'll do that. And that's what you do with a good impression. You're not actually... If, if you put the two voices next to each other, they're probably quite different, but you highlight things that people know about the voice and that they recognize. And that, that is, that is the key to, um, like I said, with Connery, it's sure, sure. It's that you sure, sure. You know, yeah. And, and with Arnold is, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, that's once you can get that, that's that. Uh, why am I giving all these tips? <laughs> but that that is that is and, the. Uh, and you too can be an impressionist. From 1999, ask Rob Vega for his video. <laughs> there you go. So. Podcast coming real soon. Yeah, there, exactly. Yeah. 
He'll be we our, should he'll do be, that actually. We should do our, that. You will just literally be on. You'll be. We can just make it three old farts making noises, and you can just give like lessons on a like a weekly basis. There you go. It's not that's that hard right. to change a two to a three. So you know that's it right. Out well. it yeah, out <clears> that, well. that's what my ex said as well. But there you go. Yeah. <laughs> But um, Dave, what, what I wanted to answer your question. You, you yeah. asked me this earlier about how did I get into it. There was something else I wanted to say, and that was um, when I was uh, when I was a kid. Uh, well, any where whatever group you're in, if you're a bunch of guys, you've got to have something to be in the group. You're either the big guy, the funny guy, the player. The, there's something you bring something, particularly with guys. There's always a guy who's got a role in a social group. And my thing was, I was this really, I was this really small guy. But I used to I used to make people laugh with impressions. I used to impersonate the teachers, and and we had one of those old classrooms that had the two. I, I don't know if around the world, whatever people have got this, but we had for some reason our classrooms had two doors. There was the door where you yep. walked in, and on the other side there was another door, which was really okay. It, it, it was just like that. We had two doors. I never found out why that was the case. But what I used to do is our teacher would walk out the classrooms. All right, guys, you know, carry on, do some work. And he would disappear. And then I would sneak out the door that no one was looking at. And I would sneak out and I would crawl under the, the, the window. And then these guys would be throwing paper and erasers and rubbers at each other and, and, and causing all kinds of grief. And I'd go, Jonathan, what are you doing? And there would be just this, 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 this panic scatter of people. And then I'd go, hey, guys. Oh, come on, man. And that was my thing. So that was that was. That's probably actually how it all started, you know, impersonate was what I could do. So you do yeah, what you I was good. I was going to ask you about I mean when you wander around on the streets and you listen to people talking here. You, you so wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's a bit creepy. Yeah, yeah. I'm but, sorry, could you say that again? I didn't yes. quite get the cadence no. of that. Yeah, well, What's you it? know. But I, I, talk, I, it, talk for a dollar. Talk. Can the, you say that again? Talk for a dollar. Is, Yes, thing is, thank you. That's great. The thing is, Rob, oh, that, that I that I said something which Stephen would never understand, which means walking around the streets, which I understand you can't do in wow. that place, in that place wow. which we 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 won't talk, we won't speak about. But, but oh, you know, no. I, just um, I, wow, just, just I, it now. Am I? I can't even go on now. You know, it's, it's... <laughs> what have you done, Dave? Look what yeah. you've done to him. Come on, yeah. what are you doing? Well, I, I thought Hertz was a place to go and rent a car, but that's another story. We're, we're, um, we're, listen, like, oh, he's full of them today. Yeah, yeah. We're, he's, he, he's yeah. full he of them today. He pre-practiced. We had you yeah. a couple weeks ago, so yeah. to speak. So this, he had to get, he had to get okay. like, Just get put ready. the script down, Dave. I can see the paper flapping in the corner of the screen. Yeah, Thank yeah, you very much. That's not a script. That, that, no, that's my, that's my uh, prescription. I have to take that a little bit later. I got to take a whole lot of it a little bit later on because I didn't. I haven't had enough today. But I thought you were going to say it's your loo paper flapping around, but anyway, yeah, you know, you're cleaning <laughs> cleaning your mouth off. That anyway. Yeah. Oh. Well, you know, all, all those all those potty, potty mouth jokes. Oh, no, I, no seriously. Um, or seriously, why are we talking seriously? Wandering around, listening to different people, talking different accents in different areas. Mm. Uh, does, uh, are you picking that up as well? Because that, that's also some really yeah. I mean, just the way that I, I, people speak is is funny. You know. I, I do, I do do that unconsciously. That is true. Uh, when I lived in Cape Town, I lived in Cape Town for six years, and uh, before everybody gets offended, we have a group of people here. I know, in the, I know, in the US, the word "coloured" is bad, but in right. South Africa, that actually is. That's how the people call themselves. It's a, uh, I guess, they're a mixture of races, and they decided that was the word. In fact, their full title is Cape Coloured. That's what it is. It's a group of folks, and. But they have a fantastically, it, it's a unique way of speaking, which I have I haven't heard anywhere else on the planet. And it it's, you know, you're my friend, let me tell you something. You know, if you come to Cape Town, you know, you're going to see all these people wandering around, you know, and, and they're crazy. They've got all this energy. And all the tourists come and they just want to tell you how how it is and where to go. And yes, and I picked that up when I that's what I did. And I used to I used cool. to work at a I used to work on a radio station there and called Good Hope in Cape Town because it's the Cape of Good Hope. And I would go to clubs and I would impersonate the people for the people. And so I know it's been approved. I go, hello, my friends. How are you? Oh, it's fantastic to be here. How are you all? Hey, Rob Vega. You know, it was great. They used to call me, they used to call me the Vega vibration. <laughs> oh, it's good time. The strange thing about that is, and it mm. sounds very much like Dutch people speaking English. 
Really? Oh, okay, yeah. I hadn't thought so, about so that. So you, you, you have this sort of, you know... This, Is there a bit of a Dutch thing to that? Really? I yeah. hadn't thought of that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. Um, because it... it uh, yeah, you're it, kidding it, me, but it's it's like this, I you mean, know. You, I mean, you it's have a bit sing-songy, Dave, you know, it comes up like that. Yeah. 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 But and they've got... Right. They've got the most, uh, I mean, Dr. Phil's got a whole bunch of crazy expressions. I mean, the people in Texas have got, they've, they've literally got a book of them, you know, yeah. like this, like this, like this, like that. You're as big as an ox and strong as an ox. And they've got these, all these idioms and analogies. And most of them look like oxes because, you know. <laughs> there you go. Uh, uh, go on and sell that beef now. And the <laughs> people in Cape Town, those folk have got a similar uh, array of very colorful, uh, very tricky expressions and if you know what they mean you'd be horrified but of course that most of them they 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 all bilingual they all speak english and afrikaans the, the one right. of the languages yeah. there and they tend to say all of those ugly things in afrikaans so you know yeah. they, they'll no one knows because what they're the, actually there's, a, awesome. there's so many uh, similarities but i mean obviously because afrikaans is that is that uh, sort of um, you know, bastard language of German. Well, it started out as Dutch. German, Dutch, and English. But it's sort of not Dutch, all, yeah. No, it's German, Dutch, and English all rolled into one. And, uh, yeah. Well, it's, it's got Malay influence as well. It, it's got, it's, uh, I mean, it's one of the newest languages on the planet, so I believe, Afrikaans is. And it, it's changing all the time, and it borrows, it, I mean, certainly in the in the years I've even been in this country, it's changed. They've, they, well, we don't have that word. We'll just grab an English word. Um there's a there's an Afrikaans word for details, which is Basondiera, but they they won't say they don't say that word. They don't use the Afrikaans word. They use detail. So they will. That's what they do. It, it's um, it's yeah, it's it's a crazy language, very descriptive yeah. language, I will say. Mm. But that's it's not. Dutch. It's nothing like Dutch anymore. Well, there, there are some very funny, very funny similarities, which are lit, literal translations, you know, in, in, into Dutch, which the Dutch obviously find. Uh, highly amusing. Oh, but, from uh, Afrikaans. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Do you uh, like what? Can you? Yeah, think they do tell Dave. Don't. Yeah, I mean, you've, you've, yeah, you've, now that you've, you've raised this, now come on. What does um, it mean? I was, I was Our guest what... today will be David. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a linguist, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you one, Dave. I'll help you out. Go there's ahead. an express. There's an expression. Now you know what? Um, I think in the states it's called cotton candy, and the UK it's called candy floss, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And and but the Afrikaans word for that is spook awesome, which literally means ghost's breath. Yeah. There you go. Sp so well, well, I've, I've, I've got the ball rolling. So what have you got for us? Yeah. So, so, <laughs> <laughs> so spoke. Well, there are there are some. Um, what's the what, what's the Afrikaans word for for a lift, an elevator? Uh, crikey. Yeah, because uh, because as soon as that's mentioned here, though, the Dutch just go into hysterics over it. So, but there are one or two things I which, are, which I are not. Know that. There are a few things which I do know, and this is not the place. We, you, on a, on another call, another time, you and I could yes. talk about. It, but this isn't the place because they're all naughty Tell words. Me. You they're can't you can't words. think of you can't you think of anything naughty, right you now. Really, you really can use naughty words on our on our show. You realize that yeah. we don't make a show for kids. We do make it for adults. And if we, there's naughty words, we just write. There's naughty words in it. Don't let you know your children. Well, if you're from New York, don't have your six year olds listen. And everywhere else, don't have your twelve year olds listen. We're good, you know. So, yeah. Dave, I've got the word for you. I, I actually I quickly checked it. I'm, I'm yeah. I wave down to my my lady next door. It's a heist buck. Yeah, heist buck. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Because heist, heist means to lift, and yes. buck is is a, is a bucket. Yeah, it's like, exactly. Yeah, so, exactly. So it's a, a lifting bucket. Is an elevator heist heist buck? Yeah, yeah. And we have but another one a, here. We have another one here as well that they use a lot, and I think that comes from 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 your part of the world. And um, ladies, la ladies of a certain posture wear them, and they're called Fleischerbrücke. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! <laughs> Well, if if we if we want to go down that route, it's probably going to. Wait, what's a Flaschenbrücke? Well, uh, what's what is it? What is that? Flaschenbrücke, a, a whistling trouser. But when you say it, it sounds quite Dutch. When you say it, it's got quite a Dutch yeah. sound. When yeah. you say it, it, it doesn't. Flaschenbrücke. It's yeah. a whistling trouser, or what trouser? No, a whistle. Well, literally translated means whistling. It, it's it's really actually it's a skin tight um, half half half. Trousers, half um, sort of uh, sports pants right. that fits. Right. That as my as my dear mother would would say, it fits everywhere and everywhere it fits. 
Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. And, and, um, right. and so they call it whispering trousers. Yeah. But it's, I will say, it's a very expressive language. One of the things, uh, I mean, we, we obviously had to grow up, we grew up with it and we had to learn it and it, it kind of just got, uh, there was there was angst about it, and, but you, you ended up just knowing it. But it is certainly a language you can insult people very well in. It's a bit like Italian, except it's got punchy sounds. So for instance, I'm not going to use a bad one, but if you, if you, uh, if you wanted to say to someone, you know, you're, you're playing with fire, you would say, you would say, uh, for instance, uh, you would say, basically it means you yeah. digging you, a grave dig, for yourself. Digging a grave for yourself, yeah. Oh, there you yeah. go, Dave. Shall I give yeah. you another one? Yeah. Yeah. How's that? Uh, sorry, that was a bit too quick. Do it, 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 run it by me again. Do you want it again? Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. That's so much for the impressions. I'm taking over Kant's lesson. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Come, Dave. What is well, your uh, familiar? Uh, well, the last bit I got was with a short stick to scratch. Yes. Is that right? And, Very good. Yes, and, yes, and yes, the yes, first yes. Bit, the first bit I, I couldn't really understand. So Basically means you, you're scratching the lion's balls with a very short stick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the layer. Is that what you said? The layer. You better run. Yeah. Ah, yeah. right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, on that, on that, one that's, thing, that, that's on useful. one note, that's useful, yeah. I've got to say this. This is very relevant. There's, I've always thought if I get a platform like this, I've got to put this out there because I'm going to do this now. And yeah. that is, I want to say to the entire, anybody in America, her name is not, and I repeat, not. Let me, sh I'll tell you how to pronounce her name. Okay. Because it bugs everyone here. So here it is. Her name is not Charlize Theron. That's not how you say her name. I'll tell you how you say her name. Do you remember a, a space movie? It was like a, it, it had lines and a Jeff Bridges was in it. It was um, in the early eighties. Do you remember what it was called? It started with a T. I'll help you out. It was called Tron. All right, wait, wait, let me think through it. Um, Starman. No, Tron. That was, <laughs> no, that was the name of the movie. Yes, movie. I know. It was that, Tron. Yes, that was a Tron. Disney, early Disney yeah, movie. Yeah, that was a it? Disney movie. Right. Steve, yeah. can you say Tron? Tron. You've, that's how you say a name. That is how you say a name. That's the correct way to say Charlie. Well, it's actually got the O is a bit more because it is an Afrikaans name. It's got a little O, so it's Tron. It's actually okay. Tron. But you can imagine people would go, I can't say that. <laughs> what I, the it, hell is that? Okay, yeah, I'm but, Charlie's Theron. Yeah. And, right. Yeah, she and, just made it easy. My chest. So mm. Throne, that means throne. In, in, so her, her name is Miss Throne. Basically, throne. I guess. You know more. Well, I actually think it might have a French origin, to be honest. Honest, I think it might yeah. be because you know that we, we had a group of people called the French Huguenots that came to South Africa. There's a yeah. massive, like all the Duplessis and the anything with those sort of names are all they're all originally French names. Um, I remember when I first went to France way back in the day. It was the year of when the Rugby World Cup was here, and all I said is I'm from South Africa. And all the guys would say, "Oh, Monet Duplessis, rugby, South Africa, I love you." Oh. <laughs> And my trip was great. Didn't have to speak uh, a word of French, even though I'm I can. Going to, I'm going to France. I'm saying I'm from South Africa. There we go. Making yeah. a note. Yeah. <laughs> well, they, they, you'll be, yeah, they, they, they actually quite enjoy Afrique du Sud. So you say, you must say, uh, excusez-moi, je viens Afrique du Sud. And you'll go, oh, Africa, South Africa. Very good. Right. There you go. I'm going to record yeah. that. So <laughs> I took <laughs> French in, uh, I took French at university and I learned when I went to okay. my first trip, I, yeah, good luck with that. I went there and literally sat down. I was going to order a hamburger. And I was speaking to the waiter in French. And he said, English? And I said, yes. He goes, speak to me in English. He's like, don't ruin my language. You have no idea of what you're saying. But the only thing I think I remember from French is like, sur la couch, which means go to bed or sit on the couch. And that's about it. Other than the, we saw Mala Rouge the other day with the Google, the whatever. So I got that. But other than that. Uh, like, Voulez-vous share avec moi ce soir? Yeah, okay. Yes, thank, thank yes. you. I like you too, but just as a friend. Um, so, but it was like one of those things where it was sort of like, <laughs> seriously? So all the French I learned was like totally useless in the real, in, in France. It was like, the guy said, you like to learn like university French, which is enough to like have a conversation with your teacher. I was like, yay, American education. I'm so proud. So it was very interesting. But yeah, Thanks I cannot my, speak anything. The most difficult thing for me, French, I can, I can read it and I can speak it, but hearing it is because they speak very 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 quickly over there yeah. and i have to go oh you know like oh my vite my vite you know like slow down 
and and they go what okay we speak english okay well so much for all that and then you right. but you see steve the reason why he did that is you spoke to him in french and he went right. okay we've made him we made an idiot out of him right. he's spoken french okay let's go with english now yeah. but if you i i find i used to find that if you just wandered in and just babbled off in english you'd get that sort of glazed right. look yeah. and you go well Definitely. Make, at least make the attempt mate you know right, right. anyway yeah. So that's well, great. All right. Well, wait, I'll tell you. Here's a, now we're going to go off on France for a minute because this is because I can't go off on New York. So oh. I went to France with some friends and my friend's wife walked into a store and she's trying to buy something and she's speaking in English. And I'm like, hey, let's go with that. And I walk in there and I'm big goofball. I go, bonjour. I'm more Italian than French. And the girl that she's trying to speak to, she said for the last 20 minutes, doesn't look at her looks at me goes hi sir how may i help you and this girl like the whole time she's trying to speak english she's like knowing and i was i heard she told me that when we left the store i just fell on the floor it's like she didn't make an effort they didn't make an effort i walked in at least you know massacred the language yeah. and they're like how may that's we it you? Yeah. yes so, yeah i, but I not, think it's a great city uh, the yeah. people I, I i will say though um the first time i went there um, the chap said to me, he said, look, thank you for making an effort there. That was good. Yeah. But he said, you'll find Parisians are quite rude re relative to the rest of French people. But I haven't found that. I, I yeah. never found that because uh, I always find that, you know, I'll go there and I'll say, excusez-moi, je ne parle pas français, s'il vous plaît, and whatever. And, and they will go, no, okay, we speak English. And and yeah. you're fine. And and you've, you've, you've made the attempt. You've acknowledged that you're in France. Yeah. Um, and that's fine. And most of the people are, they're pretty good. They're not bad. Um, or, or I, I would go there and I would say, I'm not going to do it now, but I'd say, listen, I don't want to speak English. You know, I, I want to speak French because I'm here to practice. Right. And you go, no, 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 I don't have time to teach you French. Uh, let's go with English. <laughs> and, and you, but, but then you, but then he's friendly. He says, go here, do this, get that. That's too right. expensive. Try that restaurant. And they just can't, then you can't shut them up. It, it's brilliant. Right. It's fantastic. No, I think it's a great yeah. city. The people are fine. I never had a I never had a bad experience in France when I was no, there. Whether either. it's Paris no. or one of the little cities, I I figure you just be friendly. You just do the best you can, and they know you're an idiot because you're from America, and they help you out unless you you treat them bad. Yeah, well, that's true of any city, I think. But I will say this: they yeah. uh, and 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 I got to be careful what I say. But right now, they probably have the best rugby team in the world. Oh, I'm going to get shot for that. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, because we're playing the All Blacks here. You know that. Just in case anybody. Well, by I the know. time this goes out, the match will have happened. But anyway, we are. When's the, the, when's the match? It's on Saturday, and yes. obviously we had the we had the series against Wales, which was interesting. Right, right. And um, the All Blacks are just you know they had the series against the Irish, which was interesting, and they actually right. lost to the Irish, which was really quite strange. And now they want to fire everybody, which is great. Anyway, that's a whole rugby thing which I could go off on a tangent about. But I but just want to cool. say that. So congratulations on winning Saturday. <laughs> Because if people are listening, right? Oh, or, or if you lost, oh, you guys suck. It's the old legs. I don't know. I don't know. There's the, for me. I'll tell you what, Steve. The, the, the All Blacks and South Africa, the Springboks and the All Blacks. It's it's like Dallas. It's excuse me. It's like Oklahoma and Texas. Okay. It's that same. Uh, you know, you you recognize the guy's good and he can beat you anytime, but you want to beat him, and and that's it. And I would say. And and again, I could get into deep trouble for this, but I, I've always felt there were two sides in the world and everybody else was pretending. And those two sides are this one and the one over on the Tasman Sea. Everybody else has a go. They don't do badly. They win the occasional World Cup. Yep. But in terms of uh, a religion, rugby in this country and over in New Zealand. Oh, yeah. I know the All Blacks. Close. The All Blacks. Oh, they're brilliant. Ton, oh, what a oh, team. Stories. There's always oh. like once or twice a year, there's a story in the Financial Times about it. 60 Minutes run stories. So, but they're Stunning. like, that's like, that's how like back in the day was what our <laughs> Dallas Cowboys were. Or like yeah. when the Giants had a run yeah. at, like being a yeah. real football team. That's what that was. Yeah. Except the All Blacks play a real man sport without the pads. Yeah, yeah. All right, here we go. This is like <laughs> this is like when I lived in Australia and they took me to watch Australian football, which is a combination of rugby. American oh, that is strange. With the little shorts. Hey. The, stop it. They're very cute. They just like, um, and the guy comes and he does this in front of the yeah. person. They go, what are you doing? You all just stand right there. I don't know, whatever. Just, it's a wild sport. I literally, it's just to me, I was just watching it. But Big. again, you kick a ball, you huge. get points, you do this, you do that. I was like, all right. And I went with a guy who was like the, the Australian football star, like a Joe Namath type thing for people in America. Right. They were like, 
you're with so-and-so. I'm like, yeah. And he was explaining it to me and I'm watching it. I'm like, all right, get the rules. Basically you beat the hell out of each other. And the idea is to either run or kick the ball through that thing. He goes, yeah, I go, I'm good. And it was like, that was, that was it. And then rugby is a whole nother level. I had friends who played it and I played it once and I was like, yeah, we're good. I went, I would it's like growing to though. Bones. Yeah, Steve, it's, it's, it's growing in America. It's, it's, it's it not, is. I don't know where it'll get to, but it's uh, as people are discovering it, because the problem, the reason why rugby probably isn't growing as fast as it could be is you've, you've, you've got, you've got football there. You've got, you yes. know, you've got, and it's, and they've already got that. So they go, well, we're good. We've got this, right. you know, we sit and we watch the Super Bowl for four hours and they play right. for an hour. It's, it's, it's right. crazy. Uh, I, I remember when I watched my first Super Bowl, I went, are they going to play? What the hell's going yeah. on? We well, there's an ad break now. No, that's how it goes. Right. Four hours later, and yeah. the game was up, and I went, "Wow!" And then, and and the crazy thing is, I think it was the Patriots, and who else was playing? It was ninety? No, not ninety. It was two thousand thirteen. That game, yeah. right, right. And you get invited, and no one's watching the TV. Right. No one's watching. They just all. It's- it's oh, about the yeah. food. It's about the talking. It's about the yeah. halftime show. It's, a, it's I mean, a it's party. an occasion. No right. question. It's a big deal. And everyone's there. Everybody's yeah. family's there, cousins. And, and you end up, there's about, about, I don't know, 100 people crammed into a small lounge. Right. And the game's on. The guy's got a big ass TV. And the sound is great. And the picture's great. And no one's watching. The game. Occasionally, you, there's a touchdown. Oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. And then he and goes if back you go to, to a game. No one's watching it there either. I mean, the people in the stands are, but if you're in one of the boxes, it's all about pressing the flesh and like doing everything but yeah. watching the it's an game. occasion. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's, it's just like a party. I think rugby would take off here if it got rights. I like, you know, cricket, I know is like the mm. largest thing in the planet. Like every, the cricket's like dwarfs everybody. But like, I don't think, and now football, when I say football, European football, like soccer, if you will. I know Amazon just signed a deal. They're going to do, I think it's the Premier League. I don't think anybody's broadcasting cricket here. I mean, you get it on some obscure channel, but cricket's huge. And I think if an Amazon or a Netflix or whatever, because Netflix had this series about the All Blacks, right? That's how people in America know about Mm -hmm. who they are. But if... Netflix would say, okay, we're going to do live rugby matches or Amazon did that as well. I think then it would pick up because then people would get it, if you will, for free because it's part of your deal. But I think if people don't understand it, they're not going to do it because you'd have to ingratiate them to what it actually is. And I don't think they under, you know, I don't think they understand the, the history, the pageantry and whatever where football is very simple. It's a land acquisition game. We're basically just reacting what we did with the Indians. It's not that tough. You know, it's basically yeah. we're going back and forth and we're good to go. Rugby, so. rugby, rugby can be a bit complicated, but I, I also think there's another factor. I can't believe you're talking about it, but another factor, yeah. and that is uh, with, well, let's just say, American football, just to be right. clear what we're talking about now. Right. That football, which is four hours with one hour of play, you, you right. have to, there's so much advertising revenue. You yep. can't, rugby, rugby, there isn't that amount. That's that's the other thing. Right. Uh, you know, when you play rugby, it's two halves. It's what, 80 minutes, 40 minutes, 40 minutes. Yep. You have 10, 15 minutes in between. Where are you going to put the ads? Right. So there's that to consider. Right. But it's uh, like F- against- it's like FC though. When I watch a championship or a premier game, like the advertising's yeah. on the field, right? It's the signs that keep changing as the sure. players run by. They play their 45. They go, you know, they'll do a minute break hmm. and you get another 45. It's like watching Formula One. It's like three hours of uninterrupted, which yeah. is exactly how it should be. You know, in America, we figure ways to put ads. Like you watch a NASCAR and Indy race. It's like they sh- one side of the screen is the race car. The other side's <laughs> an ad. I don't give a frick about the ad. Uh, I want to watch the race mm. car go around. So to me, like the Europeans do it right. It's like Formula One, you have this four-hour limit, done. You know, rugby, yeah. you have a limit, done. Football, yeah. if you will, soccer, you have a limit, done. In America, it's like we're going to throw the ball and then we're going to have 17 hours of ads and then we'll come back. It's like the same yeah, with basketball. It's, it's like, just let them it's money. Run. Yeah. Mm, That's the good thing about right. hockey. Unless there's a penalty, they keep going. Yeah, you know what I mean, like yeah. there's no stopping in hockey. You could play a period and not have a commercial as long as there's not a penalty or fighter or something. So, so you think, uh, but, do yeah. you think, now just to be clear, do you think football, I mean, as in the round ball, how do yeah. you think that that's taking off there? Isn't it? Oh, that's I, doing I, pretty, I love, that's it's, it's great. There's football clubs all over now, but see, when I was a kid, we had the football club. We had Pele in here in New York. Because remember, he oh. left Brazil and came up. So we yes. had Pele here at the, I think it's in New York Cosmos. So we've tried football here slash soccer before. It didn't work. 
I think now for some reason, because it's a different generation. Um, Maybe it will, yeah. And I think it works for them because a lot of people now, you know, there's head injury, there's this, there's that. So there's a section of our population that football is still that Neanderthal. We're dragging our knuckles on the ground. Even though yeah. these guys, but I've, I met, I worried when I was um, at some places I've met and worked with football players. They're really smart. They have lots of degrees. They're not idiots. Like some I'm sure are, but some are very intelligent, very smart, very articulate. So I think the public just sees them, they're knuckle draggers. Okay. So we move that aside. And I think now it's more of like, I want to be cool. Like David Beckham. You know, no, I don't think yes. anybody wants to be like Tom Brady's cool because he's got his model wife. Okay. But no one wants to be Tom Brady anymore. Like they don't want to be the quarterback. They don't want to be like who Tom Brady want doesn't be. want to be Tom Brady anymore. I, I got that right. So <laughs> I think that's part of it. I think the other than part of it, when you go into like, when you go into, you know, FC or, or football clubs, the round ball, you know, they look at David Beckham and like, well, that's cool. Like that's yeah. cooler. And they look at Ronaldo and they look at this. So I think it's gaining. I think in 20 years, it may be as in America, but I think that's one of the reasons that Amazon um, yeah, but just bought the rights to whoever. In defense of the, uh, the non-round ball the football. Skin, sure. Yeah. Uh, it, the reason I, I hear what you're saying, I would, I would, I think it'd be great if football round football took off in, in the States and cricket and all, I love cricket, yeah. Yeah. but the problem, the, the problem is there is so much money tied up yes. in the NFL and so on. So that it, it's never really, I don't know how much of an impact it's going to make, even though it's super popular. I mean, I know all the kids in, in elementary schools, there's, there's, let's just say soccer. I don't say right. soccer, but let's just say soccer. Right. There are plenty of soccer clubs, but it, it gets to high school and it kind of disappears because then you run into football and, right. and that, and that dominates. And I mean, that's fine. You know, I mean, I'm not going to, America is, I, I think it's great. I'm not going to, I'm, I'm just defending all the people that are going, Hey man, you know, whatever, why, why do we have to blow play soccer? Right. Um, no, you don't. Uh, but the rest of the world does, but that's fine. But if, right. it, if it did happen, then obviously a world series would have more meaning, but yes. I just want to say well, to people, world oh, series in baseball, it'd be a world series. Like, cause in Japan, baseball is yeah. huge. Yeah. Like when we were there, we went to a game and that game, that's an experience. So when they have the world series, I'm kind of like, well, you're going to have this I'm, being an American. I'm not being mean or anything. It's just, I like the fact we call it the world series, but that's yeah. the case. But wasn't it a brand? World series. But so. Steve, I, I've had this conversation. Wasn't it actually a brand? It wasn't, they, they weren't actually talking about the world. Am I correct? Yeah. I'm, I, gentlemen, I wasn't sure. a, gentlemen, what I'm going to do is, is, is jump in now because this sounds like the end of the show <laughs> we've just been doing. And the beginning. Okay. And Can the I just finish off a little Wait. As a as a new day dawns over the African savanna, you can hear the mating call of the cheetah, desperately seeking a mate, which is vital for the preservation of the species. I just had to get that in. Thank you. No worries. You. But right. now, right. because right. David's but, cutting us off because we're going into well, sports, that means you have no, to come back now. We have to talk sports. It, well, <laughs> Stephen, that's exactly what I was going to say. We're, we're, we're teeing up now for part three of this, which <laughs> is which is the you know oh very two, exciting two, two, yeah. two old fart, two old. But uh, talking about, uh, and we haven't even talked about the lionesses in in England that just won the, the European Cup. We haven't right. talked about yeah, the fact haven't. we haven't talked. We right. haven't talked about the fact, fact that I'm half half English and half Welsh, so I get torn apart when Which I watch rugby matches. Oh my goodness! Um, the the, the, the good looking half. <laughs> this half um, that. <laughs> <laughs> depends who's depends on who's winning. Oh um, but uh, yeah, look, gentlemen. Yes. We've got to we're going to cut it off here. Thank you ever so much okay. for, for being with us today. Thanks Always a pleasure. Everybody for listening. Let's do this again soon. And we yes, are coming please. back. This is a guarantee. We are coming back for part three. <laughs> All sports are equal, but some of sports are more equal than others. Curling. Thank we're you, talking Jeff. about curling, and we're coming back. <laughs> oh, are we off? Are we are we out? Are we